Welcome back. Today we're studying the Pythagorean theorem, named after this fellow, Pythagoras. So Pythagoras was a Greek philosopher. He lived around 500 BC, so a long, long time ago. And he was part of this group of philosophers who loved to just talk about stuff. They talked and talked and talked about not, not just math, but they'd also talk about nutrition and religion and whatever other topics they could think of. And they were called the Pythagoreans. And the funny thing about them was um, that they didn't like to write anything down. They just liked to discuss it. So today we're gonna talk about the Pythagorean theorem and we're also gonna write some stuff down. Here we go. So the Pythagorean theorem works for all right triangles, like this one. It's a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where a and b are lengths of the sides and c is the length of the hypotenuse. So we always say that c is the hypotenuse. It's the longest side. It's directly across from the right angle. A Pythagorean triple is a special kind of deal. If a, b, and c are whole numbers that satisfy a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then the three numbers are called a Pythagorean triple, like three, four, and five, because three squared plus four squared equals five squared. So let's do some examples. Here's a triangle. We're missing a leg, but we know the other leg and we know the hypotenuse. So we know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So a is what we're missing, plus 12 squared equals 13 squared. So 12 squared is 144, 13 squared is 169. We'll subtract 144 from both sides and we get a squared equals 25. Take the square to both sides. We know that a, the missing leg, is five. Let's try another one. This time we're shopping for the hypotenuse. We're missing C. So we know the two legs are 20 and 30. So 20 squared plus 30 squared will equal the hypotenuse squared. 400 plus 900, 1300 equals C squared. Take the square root of both sides and C equals about 36.1. Now sometimes you'll see figures that have a lot of stuff going on. But don't freak out if you see extra information or fractions. The basic concept is still the same. So if you look at this diamond here, there's still a right triangle inside. So we can still use the Pythagorean theorem. So we're missing one of the legs, x. So we can say that 14 squared plus x squared equals 16 squared. And we know that 16 squared is by itself because that's the hypotenuse across from the right angle. So 14 squared is 196, 16 squared is 256. So we'll subtract 196 from both sides. X squared equals 60 and X is approximately 7.7. .7. Let's try one with fractions. Again, don't freak out, process is still the same. So we've got our two legs, 1 third and 2 thirds. So 1 third squared plus 2 thirds squared equals C squared. Let's come up here. And we've got 1 ninth plus 4 ninths equals c squared. So that's 5 ninths equals c squared. So we'll take the square root of both sides and we get c equals the square root of 5 ninths. Now you can't have a fraction in the radicand, so we're going to have to break that up. And we'll do the square root of 5 over the square root of 9. And that equals well, the square root of 5 over 3. Now we have this thing called the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. And that says, if a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then we know we're dealing with a right triangle. We also know that if a squared plus b squared is greater than c squared, we're working with an acute triangle. If a squared plus b squared is less than c squared, then we're working with an obtuse triangle. So these signs right here, the relationship between a squared plus b squared, we compare that to c squared, gives us an indication as to what kind of triangle we have. So let's try this out. Do the measures of 10, 15, and 20 make a triangle? In other words, is the sum of the two smaller sides greater than the third side? Is 10 plus 15 greater than 20? 
Yes, it is. Okay, if it's a triangle, which it is, let's classify that triangle as acute, obtuse, or right. In other words, 10 squared plus 15 squared, what relationship does that have to 20 squared? Well, 100 plus 225 is less than 400. So we know we're working with an obtuse triangle. Let's try another one. Let's use 9, 40, and 41. So first, we're gonna check out the two smaller sides, add them together, and see if they're greater than the third side. So 9 plus 40 is greater than 41. So we have a possible triangle. And now we'll classify that triangle as acute, obtuse, or right. So 9 squared plus 40 squared. What relationship is that to 41 squared? I dropped the little two, but it should be there. So 81 plus 1600, that actually equals 41 squared, or 1681. So we're working with a right triangle. Okay, this one looks a little bit more complicated, but again, the concept, the process is the same. Is the sum of the two smaller sides greater than the third side? Well, five times the square root of two plus 10, yep, that's greater than 11. So we can go on to the next step. So five root two squared plus 10 squared, what relationship does that have to 11 squared? Well, five root two squared is 50 plus 10 squared, that's 150, which is greater than 121, that means we're working with an acute triangle. Okay, um, one more. 32, 35, and 70. So first we'll take the two smaller sides, make sure they're greater than 70. So 32 plus 35, nope, that's less than 70. So we can't do anything else with that one. So that's the Pythagorean theorem, brought to us by Pythagoras and his cronies, the Pythagoreans. So I hope you learned something. Good luck with your homework. Thanks for being here.